Americans at risk, exercise and healthy eating can help reverse prediabetes. Start by taking a simple one-minute risk test at doihaveprediabetes.org. Brought to you by the Ad Council and its prediabetes awareness partners. <laughs> Betty can't say that in reverse. Alexa, can you please do my food shopping today? Food shopping today added to your shopping list. Alexa, can you do my math homework for me? Hmm, I'm not sure. Alexa, play WHPC. Play WHPC. You can now listen to the voice of NASA Community College on your Amazon Echo. Simply say, Alexa, play WHPC. I am already playing WHPC. Sorry. So go ahead and buy a silicone steamer in the shape of a faceless melting pig. Buy a silicone steamer in the shape of a faceless melting pig. Yeah, that exists. And while you shop, play WHPC. Or buy a headband with a mullet hair attached to it. I refuse to buy a headband with mullet hair attached to it. Yeah, that exists too. Not sure why. But when you buy it, you can play WHPC. So play WHPC on your Amazon device today. And thanks for listening to 90.3 WHPC. Jacob Volk. Here we go. <laughs> Jacob Volk. Oh, my goodness Now gracious. you know you're listening to Beyond the Game here on the Voice of Nashville Community Volk. College. That's my line! <laughs> oh, you stole my line, you piece of garbage! Oh, man. That's okay. Do you want to finish it? No, no, you can have it. All right. I am Jacob Volk sitting across from me, Eric Fischetti and Joe Ardita. Number to call if you have something on your mind is 516-572-7440. Of course, this show is on live twice a week, Tuesdays at 5 p.m. and Fridays at 3 p.m. I excuse me. You can follow me on Twitter. Yeah, you're gonna go that's, through it. Again. That's what happens when you mess me up. See, see, now that's the thing. If I were to take the whole thing, I would have started with "I'm Jacob Volk." <laughs> you wish you were me last week. <laughs> Why's that? Because last week you hosted. Yeah, that's true. You did a very good job. Thank I you. will say. Thank you. I appreciate it. It was the first time I had the opportunity to listen, and I was very impressed. And Joe, good job as well. Thank you. Appreciate you it. You can follow me on Twitter at Real Jacob Volk. You can follow Eric on Twitter at at Sergeant Fish, and you can follow Joe on Twitter at Joe Cool and Why. You can also follow this show on Twitter at BTG WHPC. Again, the number to call if you have something on your mind is 516 572 7440. So let's get to football. I've done enough rambling. The Jaguars signed Blake Bortles to a three year extension worth $54 million. As you say that with a smirk. Yep, and the applause sound effect. Last year, he made me look like an absolute genius for supporting him so much. See that? I know my quarterbacks. Joe, what do you think of this incredible deal? I mean, you know I'm not really the f- the president biggest, of Blake Bortles. Yeah, I'm not club. the biggest Blake Bortles supporter. I mean, listen, I think you're he's allowed a- to be wrong. I think he's all right. But, you know, if, if you're looking at his stats, I mean, he had 21 touchdowns, 13 interceptions, had about 3,600, around 3,700 passing yards. And if you're looking at 2016, the numbers are very similar. He's got 23 and 16 picks. And I feel like Bortles... Yeah, uh, the year before, didn't he also throw for 4,000 yards? I think he did. I think he threw for like 4,095 yards, if I remember correctly. You uh, know I'm a big it, Blake Bortles fan. Yeah, I'm, looking at the, I'm looking at the team stats here. In 2015, he had 40... Uh, 4,400, so... 4,400? So, wow. yeah. So, Better than yeah. I thought, actually. But she was. my main point is I feel like he's kind of like Mark Sanchez when he was on the Jets in, what was it, 28 to 2010? Wh- hang on. 2009. Hang on. I-, I saw the look on your face where I feel like he's riding off the success of the defense. You know what I mean? I think he's not a bad quarterback. I think most of the things that he does wrong is, one, I think he needs a little f- a work in his footwork. Um, you know, not, not to say that uh, weirdly, but... Another thing is just decision making. Sometimes he throws interceptions where he either had a guy open or he, he should just throw the ball away, and those things are fixable. They so are fixable. That's what I'm saying. So I feel like he has potential, and if you're looking at the Jaguars franchise, they're trash. Like I mean, they they were trash until last year. Yeah. They hadn't made the playoffs since you know they had friggin' Maurice Dr- Jones Drew. <laughs> so I feel like the AFC he, title game that year too. Exactly, and I, I feel you know he probably deserved it. I I can't say that the defense got them all the way there. I mean, he did play pretty well. I think I don't know if it was one or two playoff games that they played before New England, but. Two. 
too. So yeah, they were in the wild card. You know, he didn't do bad, and I feel like he probably deserved it. I'm not mad at it. Neither am I. I love this deal for the Jaguars to get him for under 20 mil a year is really good. And I texted you guys this. I wanted him on the Jets if the Jaguars are going to be stupid enough to let him go. See, now, in terms of this deal, I actually like it. And I'm going to tell you why. Because smart. this year, he played great. He pl- he basically, not single-handedly, because a lot of that was on the defense, but Bortles held his own. They got the Jaguars to the playoffs and were, in, were, and were within one game of making the Super Bowl. Yeah. Bortles just had really one bad quarter in that Patriot game. It was yeah, a horrible fourth quarter. Even then, just Disregard that quarter. He had an incredible year. They, it, even the Jaguars as a team themselves had a better year than we all thought. But, oh, no one expects them to be in the AFC title game. And to be completely honest, there are a lot of NFL fans out there, not even just Jaguar fans, that found this move in terms of signing him questionable. Yeah, which, but that's because no one really understands quarterbacks. You know, they think they do. They think that Blake Boyles is a bad quarterback. He's not. He's a good quarterback. Is he an elite quarterback? Not yet. No, and I don't know if he'll really ever get to that Aaron Rodgers, Tom Brady, or Peyton Manning level. So he might reach like a Joe Flacco level? He's one of the guys that you could probably yeah. build a team around and you win with. You know what? Joe, yeah, I'll say Joe Flacco. I'll say Blake Boyles can win a Super Bowl for you. I'll I say mean, that. they were close. They really were. That's why I'm saying it. The Bills signed Vontae Davis to a one-year deal worth $5 million, according to Pro Football Focus. Last year, he had a 45.2 overall grade. Joe, what do you think of the deal? Uh, I personally... What was the salary on it? $5 million. $5 million, One year, $5 million. That's not bad. I mean, Vontae Davis is you know, getting a little bit older. Wait, no, is he young? Davis is in his, like, late 20s, early 30s. I think he's 28, 29. Okay, so, you know, he's going to be playing, like, a starting, like, you know, starting job, but not, like, a role player, you know what I mean? He's not, like, the the, the star of the team, so to say, for one. He's 29, by the way. Okay, okay, so he's... Yeah, I said late 20s, early 30s, okay. So, you know, he's going to be playing, you know, starting role. I don't see anything wrong with it. I don't know what else there really is to say. See, now, with this deal, this is a prove-it deal, because he did get injured last year, but even with signing Vontae Davis, it's clear to the Bills and the Bills fans that they're not signing EJ Gaines. Yeah, that's true. So basically, the Bills do need cornerback help. I am not mad at it because normally when players get these prove it deals, they normally play well. Like they're playing for another contract. This is a one year deal, it's a nothing contract. So if he does bad, cut him loose. Yeah, exactly. The Bears cut Pernell McPhee. According to Pro Football Focus, last year, he had a 79.9 overall grade. What do you think of him being cut, Chuck? Well, isn't he, uh, hasn't he dealt with like a lot of injuries? He did finish the year injured, or he started it injured. I don't remember which off the top of my head. Money was an issue with this. They also cut Quentin Demps, which was another issue. Um, I just, for the production you got for him, I don't like the fact that he was cut. Quentin Demps was fine. That's why I didn't bring it up. That was a big nothing burger of a move to me. But Pernell McPhee is still a solid linebacker in this league. I'm telling you right now, McPhee is going to be a hot commodity for teams desperately needed for linebackers. I'm telling you right now, the Giants are going to take a long, hard look at him. You know what? I think he'd be a good fit for the Giants. I honestly do. Giants need linebacker help. And you know what's funny about this? McPhee was Ryan Pace's first major move. He really was. Yeah, that's kind of funny how that worked out. But you know what? And on top of it, it's kind of sad to see him go because apparently he was a gla- he was a great locker room player. Presence in the Bears locker room. Apparently, he mentored Leonard Floyd, you know, the uh, defensive prospect out of Georgia at the time, which I wanted the Giants to get to, but that's a different story. But, uh, Jerry <laughs> You Reese. want the Giants to get everyone. <laughs> well, that, that, I'm, I only want the Giants to get what they need. Yeah, that's I'm, fair. I'm not saying the Giants should get Tom Brady, although that would be nice. But, uh, <laughs> a 40 year old Tom Brady. I was about to say, you want Brady now? <laughs> well, look, I'll take him when he's 55. Yeah, you know what? He could still play at 55, let me tell you. According to Barry Jackson of the Miami Herald, the Dolphins are strongly considering releasing Jawan James. According to Pro Football Focus, last year he had an 80 overall grade. Joe, what do you think of him potentially being cut? Well, also using a Pro Football Focus here, it said that he was ranked number 10 for right tackles in the NFL, which is not bad. And I think the reason that they are kind of releasing him, 
applied to his contract and not really his like performance of play. I know he was expected to earn around nine million dollars, and you're seeing it in baseball. You know, players are kind of getting under underpaid. You know, it's the salaries typical, are being cut. It's typical Mike Tannenbaum to get rid of a solid young player to make room for his veteran free agents. He did it with the Jets, and he's doing it now for the Dolphins. And also so on stupid on, on the Miami Dolphins. Obviously, we know they have Laramie Tunsil on that offensive line, but they also have an opportunity to sign a young offensive lineman named Sam Young, but they shouldn't go into the year with Laramie Tunsil and Sam Young. You obviously need more help, and I feel like Jawan James can be that help. He can be that guy. I don't get this move. It's a head-scratcher because if you need help protecting a quarterback, assuming it's Ryan Tannehill, why wouldn't you just hold on to it? I get it. It's a pay cut, but you can use him. It's really stupid. Former Jets GMs. Man. Yep. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> and I never liked Jawan James coming out of Tennessee. I thought that was a stupid pick at the time, but it worked out for the Dolphins. I don't know why Tannenbaum's cutting bait. So we got about a minute left. It's time for the bottom of the ninth. Eric, we'll start with you. So I just want to touch on the trade that we unfortunately did not get to when the Red Wings traded Thomas Tatar to the Golden Knights for a first-round pick this year, the Islanders' second-round pick next year, and the third-round pick in 2021. I do think that it really came as a surprise to, honestly, anyone that's a Red Wings fan and possibly a Vegas Golden Knights fan, because Tatar's name was kind of mentioned here and there, but he wasn't really a hot commodity going in. But I'm telling you right now, I don't like the move. Because really? I really do think... For Vegas? When, yeah, I don't like the move for Vegas, only because if you take even one person out of that lineup for the Golden Knights, it could ruin chemistry. You know and, what? I agree with you, And actually. the Knights are on such a roll that they are legitimate Stanley Cup contenders right now. I think they just took a hit. I like the Tar. He's a good player, but I don't think it was a move they needed to make. I agree with you. Chemistry is fantastic for the Golden Knights. To mess it up would be devastating for him. I see where you're coming from. I actually agree with you. Joe? I just want to talk about real quick... Stephen Curry dropped 54 points on the Knicks last night. and I Did just you wanted... expect anything less? No, I didn't. I mean, I, I, I love him personally as a player. <laughs> I mean, I wasn't watching the entire game, but, you know, Knicks kept it close. But the point being is I just want to make a comment on the evolution of basketball. If your team is not shooting the three-pointer, you are going to lose, and you're not going to be a good team. That's what it's coming down to. Yep. And... Yeah, that's pretty much it. I mean, look at the Knicks. They're not shooting threes, and that's why they're losing. So, with the Olympics over and the Nets playing like garbage, I am watching a lot of college basketball. It's a college basketball night for me. SEC Network all the way. All right. And the Islanders I will watch, too. All right. Looks like we're bad out of time here on Beyond the Game. For Eric Fischetti, Joe Ardita, and Carpe Diem, I am Jacob Volk saying that I need her like Custer needs Indians.